I found out about the Rab Venable uh, research competition and experience when I was a second year medical student. Uh, Mildred Olivier, one of the directors of the program, had gone to my medical school and she's one of the ophthalmologists uh, who works with our medical school currently. So I had spoken with her about a career in ophthalmology and she encouraged me to do some research and uh, present at meetings and so one of the projects that I was working on at the time she thought would be a good project to try and present. So I ended up presenting that in 2008 um, as a medical student uh, there. Kind of what have you... Go ahead. Okay. Um... Uh, what have you gained from, you know, your experience in NMA? How has this been, um, either the people that you've met or the experience of participating been um, like a resource to you? Yeah. The NMA and the Rab Venable uh, research competition in particular has been a phenomenal experience for a number of reasons. Uh, it's given me a platform to present research it's helped to provide some of the tools to present the research effectively. And it's given an opportunity to network with a number of people uh, in ophthalmology. And now as I transition from fellowship training to um, becoming faculty, it's also given me the opportunity to work with some of the med students and some of the residents um, and pay it forward, some of the opportunities that were given to me. So, before I had come to residency, I had not really done very many presentations in front of large groups of people, and so the Rab Venable competition allowed me to do that. Some of the preparation for that includes uh, public speaking classes, where they go over the things that are important in giving a presentation, and they go over individually how you present the things that you do with your body language and gestures, your pauses, and I think it's unbelievably helpful to go through that before presenting. I've met a number of faculty ophthalmologists in different locations that I've been able to keep in touch with that have given me a little bit of perspective on experiences for residency, how to choose fellowships, and what to think about now as far as the job search. And so I'm really excited that I've had that opportunity and now I get to pay it forward. Uh, meeting uh, the medical students has been a great situation to try and advance them and let them know what my experience was like so they don't have to be as nervous or concerned about some of those things as I was, and they also will have some of the resources and opportunities uh, to allow things to run smoothly for them. So getting to where you are now, I, I doubt it's been easy. Um, how Can you tell me about obstacles or barriers or challenges along the way and how you overcame them? I think I've been very fortunate uh, to have had very few um, barriers uh, in my educational experience. I think part of what's made that process smooth is that I love what I'm doing and that has allowed me to ignore or potentially not even notice the vast majority of things that other people might think as obstacles. I know that going to medical school, our medical school itself did not have an ophthalmology department. And so we had some ophthalmology um, faculty members in different locations that were affiliated with the university. Um, but I had to seek out some of the research experiences and opportunities on my own. I was blessed with some people who were willing to discuss with me who I should work with and how to get in touch with them. Um, and then once that started going, uh, things really started to take off from there. So having an opportunity to do research and it, it was challenging to travel to different places and figure out how I was still going to pay for my apartment in Chicago while traveling and doing research in different locations. And again, I've been very fortunate with the people who have uh, reached out to me and been willing to sponsor me um, and mentor me through those uh, research experiences, helping me, you know, somewhat financially as well. Um, the residency experience in ophthalmology, I think, is a challenging process for anyone who's going into the field. I think almost every other residency, you're equipped with the tools to start your residency based on what you've done in medical school. And the skill set in residency for ophthalmology is much different than anything that you've ever had to do. So that learning curve, I think, is pretty steep for everyone. Um, it was a little bit more challenging for me in some ways because I was training in Miami. And in addition to learning ophthalmology, I had to learn Spanish at the same time. And it was a very intense, extremely rewarding experience. 
And so while I think at the time I, I was a little bit uh, nervous about how it was going to go, it, it was such an amazing experience. And so when I look back on it now, I don't really look at it much as um, obstacles that were there. It was just the journey that I appreciated and experienced um, at the time. What advice would you have for someone who has, who is interested in medicine or ophthalmology or, um, a, you know, a, I guess a subspecialty within ophthalmology, but has kind of stumbled along the way? Their grades aren't perfect. They applied once, they didn't get in. You know, kind of what, what advice do you have for that person who um, is an imperfect applicant? One of the things that was really helpful for me along the process um, that some of the mentors I worked with had not been perfect applicants, candidates, residents, or fellows at various points along the process. And they always encouraged me to be myself, work as hard as possible, and try and put myself in as good a position as I could be to get lucky. And I think when I work with medical students and residents and fellows now, I try and encourage them the same way. You can't do anything about what has happened in the past. All you can do is focus on what the next step is. Taking the opportunities that you have and making the best of them. Looking for good research opportunities, looking for good mentors, and maximizing those experiences are going to be invaluable. I think the most important thing to do if you've struggled along the way is to look yourself in the mirror and decide if this is what you want to do. Once you know that this is the path that you want, your passion for it will be enough to carry you through the obstacles. You will be able to navigate the challenges. I know plenty of people who had difficulty getting into medical school the first time who had difficulty applying in residency, whether it meant that they didn't get into a residency position the first time they applied or they didn't necessarily get uh, the position that they wanted. And same thing with fellowship. And fortunately, I have seen them fight through those situations, continue to work hard, and they have been able to persevere. So I think as long as you know that that's what you want to do and you're willing to give your energy and effort, the opportunities are still there despite having hit a couple of stumbling blocks along the way. That's great. Um, where do you see your future you know, taking you? The question of how I view my career and uh, where my future is going to be is a little bit of a challenging one. I've always viewed the life of an academician as the goal um, for myself. I will probably work at an academic institution. I love to teach. I love to train, um, both in clinic and in the operating room. I like to be a part of the future of ophthalmology through the next generation of residents and fellows. I like to be a part of the research experience that is changing how we practice medicine. And for a lot of those reasons, I think I will likely end up in an academic institution fighting for the next group of people um, to have good opportunities to do what they want to do and achieve their goals. Um, and how exactly I carry that out in terms of what leadership positions or, or how my career take, shapes uh, or takes place, I think remains to be seen a little bit. Good? Yeah. Okay. You're